Hi, uh, good afternoon. So, okay. okay, so um, last year I was presenting how we could uh, integrate uh, OVS uh, uh, with layer 7 to extend OVS with layer 7 classification and this year I would like to demonstrate how in fact it is uh, implemented today. So first of all a quick introduction about Cosmos and what we do. Cosmos main product is a DPI engine and think of the DPI engine as a library where you inject payload and in return you get the classification, so the layer 7 application ID, so this is BitTorrent, this is SSH. Also, you can also get some metadata like SQL query, na file name, mime tab, stuff like that. But we'll focus on layer 7 classification today. So first I'm going to explain uh, briefly how the integration is made, so how it has been integrated, and then I'm going to demonstrate how, based on this implementation, we are going to, uh, to, to implement a layer 7 firewall and a layer 7 quality of service, followed by uh, a big demo with uh, OpenStack, OpenDelight, and OVS, so for dynamic service chaining, and then some conclusion words, knowing that uh, I've put a lot of uh, screenshots at the end of the demo, uh, at the slide in case of demo effect and uh, for further reading, so because we're never <laughs> too careful. Now, let's think about a generic data pass. So a generic data pass is composed of a packet reception, a floatable lookup, and then actions. Layer 1 to layer 4 stateful uh, data pass um, can be extended with a layer 7 application ID, so when you store uh, the, the contract state, for instance, right to it, you can store, okay, this is SSH. And then you can steer based on this is SSH and this is port 22, for instance. The question is, how do we uh, fill this, uh, this entry with the application ID? So you need to have a special value in the flow table saying, okay, for this given flow, the classification has not been done. For instance, DPI is working on payload. So no payload, no DPI. So after the TCP and check. So at the beginning, the application ID is zero. Until it, until it has been changed to something saying, okay, I'm classified, so you need to send a copy of the traffic to the DPI engine. And the DPI engine will do the um, analysis asynchronously and push back the result in the flow table. Our experience is worst case on a telco network, it's 10% of the traffic is under classification, while 90% is already classified. So if you take a data pass, you add for 10% of the packet a copy, you extend your, your flow table with a, with a field and your key lookup, and you have a layer 7 aware data pass. As simple as that. Now with OVS. So the cool stuff is, okay, contract. So thanks to uh, contract implementers, you're doing great. And um, the cool thing about DPI there is there is no patch. So <laughs> how can it work? So we leverage here the contract mark. We could also use a con label, but for this demo, we use the mark. That's a, just a, a shortcut that we took. So to hold the application ID. So now that you can attach a contract to a packet in OVS, so we store the application ID in the contract, and then we can, uh, we can uh, apply OVS action based on the contract mark, meaning this is SSH, this is BitTorrent, etc. So we have a special value which is uh, saying, OK, I want, to, I, want to, uh, to I want to analyze more packets from the DPI engine perspective. So what we see is we send the packet here so packets under classification are sent to a userland application via a, a special OVS port. So that's a regular OVS port that analyzes the traffic and push back uh, via a Netlink contract message the classification in the mark. That's very, very simple. So just think that 10% of the packet will be copied here. Now, no patch does not mean that you don't have to be careful with your rule set in order to implement layer 7 uh, classification. So you need to, so first, a little, little words about the caption. So in blue, uh, you have the layer 7 matcher. In green, you have the current layer 1 to layer 4 matcher. And in, in um, red, you have the obvious action. So what we do is uh, all packets coming in table 0, we attach a contract, and we go to table 1. Table 1 job is to send the packet to the 
uh, DPI uh, engine if needed. So if the packet is classified already, we resubmit to table two. If the, if the packet is not classified, okay, so lower priority rule, we output to the layer seven port, so we make a copy of the packet and we resubmit to table two. So at the end, all packets come into table two <coughs> with a contract mark uh, holding the application ID or zero if it's not known. So for instance, so from high priority rule to lower priority rule, so this is SSH, this is port 22, I let it go through. Now, lower priority, this is SSH, so obviously this is not port 22, so something I don't want to see on my network, I just drop it. And then, okay, the default policy here is to let, is to let packet go through. Now, time for the first demo. A few words of introduction about the demo scenario. So uh, first, uh, we will uh, implement a layer seven firewall with uh, SSH on port 22 allowed only. So I'm going to try to connect on a port that will, that will be dropped. And second, uh, the second um, scenario is to rate limit BitTorrent. So uh, to demonstrate the BitTorrent limitation, I'm going to download a file, the same file via BitTorrent and via HTTP, and via BitTorrent it will be rate limited. So the setup is very simple. That's the same as a very simple uh, mininet uh, network. So now, <coughs> first demo. So we have here uh, layer seven classification uh, uh, logs. So every time a contract will be updated, <coughs> sorry, will be updated, you're gonna have to, to have a log with a new mark. Here you have the contract. So I've made a little Python script to have it uh, nice from my perspective. Here you have the client and here you have the rules. So very briefly, table zero, attach the contract. Table one, so we use the contract MSB in order to, try to see if the packet can be offloaded or not. So offloaded means, okay, the DPI engine does not need packets anymore. For instance, for FTP, FTP will never be offloaded, but FTP data will be offloaded because you need to snoop all FTP packet session like SIP, which are signaling protocol to classify the subsequent session. So we need a bit for that. And then we, and then in table two, okay, we implement, uh, so C6 is the application ID of SSH. So these two rules allow uh, SSH on port 22, while a lower priority rule, we say, okay, I'm gonna drop it. Then, BitTorrent application ID 15, so F, so I send to a specific queue I created, while other traffic will hit normal and will go at uh, default rate. So here, I'm on a client. Let's SSH on the server. <clears throat> okay, so it has been classified and offloaded, C6. So as you can see here, uh, we have a contract which is assured, the mark, and it's offloaded, and uh, this is uh, SSH. And uh, we have hit uh, these rules as the, as the statistics uh, as the statistics show. Now let's try to, no, oh, not to halt the server. Let's try to connect on a non-regular port. Okay, so what we see is we have classified SSH. Uh, the session is established on port 5022, but we don't get through because we hit this rule. Okay, we are dropped now. So that's a layer seven firewall. Now, let's download a server. So I like this file because it's always on the machine. Yeah, this one, so let's download. So as you can see, it's pretty fast. And uh, so 43, that's uh, HTTP, so no rule here, so we hit the default rule, full speed. And now with BitTorrent. So it's pretty slow because we are hitting this rule. And one thing to know is, okay, this would be nicer this way. So. BitTorrent uh, here, uh, you have the tracker uh, flow and you have also the download, the read download. So that's why we have a difference between a layer seven protocol, which is for instance, HTTP with application BitTorrent. Okay, this is a tracker for instance. And here we rate limit everything. So, okay. So that was for the first demo part. Now let's talk about 
service chaining. So this morning you had a talk, so I'm going to explain in a different way and very fast. So that's a typical GI LAN, but a VCP. So basically, service chaining aims to deploy services between an access network and an uplink, so typically internet. So here we have a firewall, rate limiter, load balancer, parental control, and you have two key elements in service chaining. You have the service classifier that analyze the packet coming from access or internet, and then send the packet into the proper chain, give them, via giving them to the SFF, the service function forwarder, which just know the chain topology hop by hop. For instance, let's say we have a bit oriented chain, so with a firewall and rate limiter, so the service classifier recognize BitTorrent and then encapsulate it into uh, the proper chain, the BitTorrent chain. In this demonstration, we use a TOS, the IPv4 DSCP. And just a few words. Why? Why not NSH? First, because it's not committed. Second, because this demo that you are going to see is based on a, on a setup that we deploy in a telco lab. And their requirement was to use two days uh, without patch. Uh, uh, so no NSH. But they want to be NSH ready, so in six months, we're, gonna, we're going to update. So here, okay, in, in send to the SFF, and then based on TOS, first hop, second hop, and to the internet. And in service chaining, what's important is also to share the VNF uh, between, uh, uh, between different chains. So layer seven helps you to craft very optimized chain by bypassing uh, some VNF, because for instance, for encrypted traffic, you can bypass DPI, uh, deep packet analysis. The demo elements. So we have a bunch of VNFs, so DPI QoS firewall connected to the SFF, implemented as a bridge, uh, OVS bridge. We have the BR classifier on which the client is connected, and then the server is simulating internet. So all of this topology is managed and uh, all of these bridges, these two bridges are managed by Open Delight, while the VM and the access network are managed by uh, open stack. So that's an open stack kilo, no patch. And that's an open daylight lithium, no patch. And just for you to, 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 to know that uh, open daylight is layer seven aware for service chaining for this project. And the Cosmos develops the glue between open daylight and open stack to make it work. Few words about the BR classifier rules. These are a almost the same as uh, the, the rules before. So table zero, we attach the contract. Then we send the packet for analysis. And then, okay, what does it mean sending to a chain? Sending to a chain is, okay, here. Here I've got two chains. Um, so encrypted uh, with a toss of 92, peer to peer 96. So if this is SSH, I modify the toss and I send to SFF and that's it. Same for BitTorrent. And uh, the default policy is quite uh, open here. One special case is packet coming back from SSF, we just remove uh, the TOS. So in case of NSH, we would pop the, SF, the, um, we would pop the, um, the NSH header. Because just back on the slides here, packets go from the service classifier to the SFF and then from the SFF back to the service classifier. Because the end user does not talk NSH. Okay. Few words about, uh, because we are at Open vSwitch uh, conference, so um, about the SFF. I don't want to, to, to jump into details here because that's a little more complex than the, the table before, but we map the uh, NSH and uh, network service pass and network service index, NSP, NS, NSI, into reg zero, reg one. So when NSH will be ready in Open vSwitch, uh, uh, we will update very smoothly to the new implementation and let the end user choose between NSH and TOS because some people will still stick on TOS. Also, uh, just to let you know that uh, it's a bit complex because we support multiple SFF, so uh, multiple compute nodes, and you, had, you need to encode where you're coming from, so here we use VLANs. Okay. So that's my OpenStack dashboard with uh, one, two, my three VNFs, firewall, QoS, DPI, server, and a client. And we are going to SSH on these machines to see what's going on on the SFF interface with a TCP dump on the VNF side and hit and run some command on the client. From an open delight perspective, so 
This one is nice, just for the animation. So from open delight perspective, so we have three VNF, uh, an SFF, and a service classifier. I've created, so sorry, three chains. So a default chain, a peer-to-peer -peer chain, and an encrypted chain. And then we define a CE, uh, meaning which traffic go in which chain. So here we have FTP data going to default chain, same as, uh, same as HTTP, same as BitTorrent. And uh, we have, uh, sorry, BitTorrent go to P2P and SSH go to um, encrypted. So very fast. So here we have the, down we have the DPI. So we have the firewall, the QoS, and the DPI uh, VNF. Same as before, the actions. So let's SSH on server. Yes. And as you can see, so SSH is encrypted, and we go to chain, and chain number three, so pass ID three, so with a toss of 10 and C. And what you see here is the toss is 10 and C. So it has been pushed. So that's how it works. Let's a file. So we should go to the default chain. So the default chain here is uh, four and eight. So that's what we see here. And uh, you can see the statistics which have been incremented here. So 43, that's uh, HTTP, so what we had here. So now let's say I'm not happy with my chains and I want to deploy a new service function chain. So for FTP. So let's create a new function chain, file transfer. And in, in this chain, I want to deploy just a QoS VNF. OK, so I have to render. I have to render the service pass. And file transfer pass 7. OK. So now let's update the ACE. So let's remove this one. Let's remove the two FTP. So we create a new ACE. So packet will traverse file transfer, FTP data, that's a name, that's just a name. Yeah, whatever, coming from internet. And we want to, stand, to send in, so the, sorry, here. We want to send FTP data in it, okay. So let's submit. OK, so it has been updated. And now here we have our new chain. So let's FTP and see if it has been pushed. OK, so we just go through this new chain, 1C. One C, which is done just based off QoS. So that's dynamic service chaining, and uh, we use OVS with, uh, as, a, as a classifier and an SFF, both. Few words of conclusion. So having layer seven aware uh, data pass is cool, but uh, having the management layer seven aware is also mandatory. So think about OpenStack service uh, security group, Oven, Open Delight for other project than uh, service chaining, group-based policy, firewalls as a service. In terms of optimization, so uh, we developed a, uh, a driver to avoid the copy via a port. So that's one thing we were going to, uh, to open source when needed. Uh, porting to DPDK data pass. So uh, the classifier, layer seven classifier could be um, a secondary process while, a DPDK secondary process while the, the data pass, the current data pass would be a primary process or we can find another way to, to, to connect them. Also, we could uh, provide layer seven visibility in the whole data center by enriching the IP fix current implementation within OVS uh, to report in the, in the, in the IP fix template, sorry, the records, the, the contract, the con lab. And step two would be to, to send also the metadata that have been extracted, but it's required to store them in the contract. So that's kind of a lot of work. Same for layer seven aware service chaining. So to put the contract mark into the NSH header type one for the VNF to get the application ID and also uh, the ability to send some metadata in NSH v2. But same constraint as uh, the point above, we need to, to store them. Yeah. 
And that's all. Thank you. We have some time for, for questions, so uh, um, if anybody has, uh, Sorry. has a question, uh, please come up to, to one of the mics. So uh, while we're waiting for our first question, I, I have to say I, I really like it that you, that you showed the, the flow tables there. Um, I, I know that they, they were, it was too, too small and too quick to really study them, but for me it always gives a, a real sense of concreteness when I, when I see that, so I appreciate that. Thank you, and uh, you, have, uh, you have them in Sousa. That's a real one that I use for the demo uh, in Annex. So if you want to study them uh, for reference, you have the commands also for the, for the QoS and stuff like that. Thank you. So I did not fully understand your talk, and that's the reason I'm asking this question. Um, the question I have, you described layer seven classification, yeah. and then you talk about service forwarding function. Yeah. And it's, it sounded like you were talking about tables which allow you to make decisions which flows should go through the chain of those services which are running on NFVs. If it is correct, then you are making the rules decision in OVS classification. You know, you're sort of saying that if this connection tracker tells me that this is th this kind of flow, these are the rules I'm going to apply, and I'm going to send them through firewall and load balancer and so on and yes, so forth, right? That, that's correct. Right. So my question is, does OVS have the performance? Does it have the necessary knowledge of the network to, cor to correctly calculate or make the rules? So today, the rules are made by Open Delight. So, uh, and uh, the renderer, because that's the name of uh, the renderer, to, to calculate the open flow rules are uh, Cosmos homemade. But uh, there are others which are available, made by Ericsson and others. So at some point it will be pushed open source, but uh, that's just a matter of, uh, you know, calculating. Uh, you have to calculate the SFF and the classifier rules. Okay, and a dumb question. When you said you do classif classification of, a, you know, 10% of the telco flows, right? Do you open the packet and then you put it back together? How do you get inside an encrypted packet? And how we, we what kind of performance hits does it we, take? We, we don't go into encrypted packets. And just to say that at a given time, 90% of the packets have been already classified. So at the beginning, 100% have, have been classified. But uh, on an established rate, on a steady state, only 10% are new flows. Just to say that we don't put a lot of pressure. Uh, but 10% of uh, 10 gigabit is still 1 gigabit. but. Uh, Question is on uh, DPI engine. Did you add that as an extension to OVS or is it running out of uh, process? Yeah. So uh, that's, uh, that's a user land application okay. that, that gets the packets uh, via an OVS port and uh, push back the, the classification result into the contract mark. That's it. Doesn't it hit quite a bit of performance if you have to classify uh, often? So uh, the performance of the, of the port, uh, I can let the, the, the question to, uh, to Ben, but from a DPI perspective, uh, so one core of uh, Intel uh, uh, has well V3, so it's, uh, it's uh, about 10 gig of traffic that we can handle. Okay, I'm sorry, well, there's one more question I had. Is, um, uh, let me try to phrase it correctly. Um, so the packet traverses, and then uh, you program all the flows in the beginning. Uh, I saw the flow tables. Uh, I mean, uh, some time back I tried something similar, but I had to classify each and every time when it comes out to, um, so how did you actually go back and forth between uh, the flow creation service forwarding engine and defining the flows? So we, we, don't, we don't go back and forth because we work on copy of the packet. So you do one time and then you... So we, 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 get the packet, we get a copy of the packet and uh, then we update the flow table asynchronously. Based on source IP or fightable? Based on the packet content. DPI is, uh, we just inspect the payload. DPI is yeah, yeah, yeah. the matter I, of DPI saying, okay, that's okay. SSH by inspecting the payloads, for instance, but uh, we don't care about the ports. Okay, I'll probably take it offline with you. Thank you. Okay, we, we have time for a question if it's quick. Okay, hi Frank, great presentation. I have one question. What about DPDK? It seems like a natural fit since DPI engine's already in user space 
and you're, you would avoid an extra copy, you could integrate it readily. And I believe you've actually done some work with DPTK, so I'm curious as to why it's not included here. So, um, in fact, uh, so uh, we have developed a VNF, which is a service classifier, layer one to layer seven, based on DPDK, with a data pass and the DPI as a secondary process. It has not been put into, uh, so it has not been put in OVDK yet, because uh, the natural way, from my perspective, is to make things work uh, with uh, the, the kernel data pass, and then to find a way with DPDK if it makes sense for people. But it's more a problem of, I mean, user traction than technical issues. There is no technical issue. Huh? I say, huh? you put a ring, you're done. You put a ring and a way uh, to, to update the flow table, and you're done. All right. Yes, uh, DPDKR would work nicely. Our, uh, uh, we're, we're out of time, so uh, let's thank our speaker once again. Thank you.